My name's Steve and uh, Christina, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Well, my name is Cristina Sánchez and I'm a biochemist. I work at Complutense University in Madrid, Spain, and I've been doing research, basic research on cannabinoids for the last 15 years and precisely on the anti-tumor potential of these compounds. Okay. Um, now, can, we, can you get into a little bit more detail about that? Because uh, that's quite a broad field, isn't it? So recently you've been studying um, the effect of cannabinoids with breast cancer, is that correct? Yes, I started my research in the late 1990s on another type of tumor, on glioblastoma tumors, which is a type of uh, brain tumor that is very, very aggressive. But for the last 10 years I've been focusing my research on breast cancer. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm, I'm trying to find out if breast cancer patients may benefit from cannabinoids. Not as a palliative uh, compound, but as anti-tumor uh, therapies. So, to kill the cancer cell? Exactly. Not only killing cancer cells, but also blocking other important things that are related to cancer progression. Because cancer progression not only involves cancer cells growing, but also is spreading to new locations and generating metastases and generating new blood vessels to feed the cancer cells. So what we know is that cannabinoids block not only cancer cell proliferation and induces cancer cell death, but also block these other important features of cancer progression. That sounds amazing. <laughs> Um, did you get the time to look at the Dennis Hill interview that we did? Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. What did you make of it? Well, um, I, I have a lot of respect for Dennis. That's the first thing I want to say. Good. But in, in biochemical terms or from my perspective, from a basic researcher, a researcher, I think there were some things that were not 100% precise. Fantastic. So, what were they? Hmm. What, what were the things that weren't precise? I'd like to know. Well, for example, uh, and I understand that this comes from his particular experience, but he said that uh, cannabis oil cured her cancer, his cancer, sorry and that he recommends patients to take a 1-1 one, one, uh, THC CBD ratio That's and right. that that is the answer for cancer mm -hmm. and I, I do not agree with that first of all because we don't know yet if cannabinoids cure cancer in human patients and I think this is something that is very important to say to patients we have a lot of preclinical information very strong preclinical information and we think that chances are that it may help human patients. But it's important to, for patients to know that all this information comes from preclinical studies, mm -hmm. which means studies performed in animals, not in humans, and that unfortunately we don't have a controlled human trials to get information from them, from them saying that cannabinoids cure cancer. I hope they do, and I'm pushing very hard to have that answer as soon as possible, but we don't have that answer yet. I hope that, uh, that well, that's the first thing we have to say. And the other okay. one is that yeah. uh, if cannabinoids can help patients, cancer patients, which I think they do, uh, it's not always a one-one THC CBD ratio. I think, and I'm saying this from all the preclinical research we and other groups have done. Uh, each cancer type is different. Each patient is different, and probably each patient will benefit, benefit from a different THC CBD ratio. So I wouldn't say something like you have to go for a 1-1 one, one THC CBD ratio and that will cure your cancer. I wow. think that's something very risky to say. That's, uh, well, that's, that's, that's difficult because you're saying that each patient is an individual and they might need different ratios of THC to CBD. Um, yeah, it is. I know it's different. But it's difficult, yeah. but it is the same for other therapies. I mean, for example, in breast cancer, I work on on this particular pathology. 
we use the same term breast cancer mm -hmm. for all the patients that have a lump in the breast mm -hmm. but in molecular terms and in terms of the therapy they receive mm. the, their tumors are completely different so one has to choose which medicine has to give a particular patient, mm -hmm. patient depending on the molecular features of the tumor with cannabinoids it's exactly the same thing uh, it, in the future, we will know which type of tumor benefit from a one-one ratio. Mm -hmm. It will be a lot of them for sure, but maybe other tumors will need more THC than CBD, or maybe others would need more CBD than THC, and we are not at that point where we have that information yet. Mm -hmm. I know this is something difficult to accept from the patient perspective, but that's, that's what we know. Yeah, I guess it's a little bit scary from the patient's perspective because these, these people are desperate um, for a cure and um, they've heard anecdotal evidence from people like uh, Dennis Hill and Rick Simpson and other people that, um, that the uh, cannabis oil does kill cancer cells. And, and Dennis was saying that... Um, He's seen it in, on a uh, like on a petri dish or something on a, 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 a I don't know in mm -hmm. some sort of um, um, setup where he's seen the cannabinoid actually kill the cell. Uh, he mentioned yeah, that, that's yeah. what we do for a living. I mean, we do those experiments all the time. That's what we do you know, right. on a regular basis. Yeah. And we use these petri dishes, plastic uh, dishes, where yeah. we plate the cancer cells and we kill them. And we can kill them with THC, with CBD, with 1-1 one -one ratios, with 1 to 10 ratios, with 10 to 1 ratios. And it depends on the type of cancer cells we're working with. So right. if we translate this to animal models, we see the same thing. Not all tumor types respond the same way to each cannabinoid. So we have uh, better combinations for glioma, in which THC seems to be the most important anti-tumoral compound. We see different effects for human uh, breast tumor. Uh, sorry, for uh, HER2 positive breast tumors. Mm. in which CBD seems to be more potent than THC. So it depends on the type of tumor, really. It really depends on the type of tumor. Was there anything else in the, in the interview with Dennis that you um, couldn't agree with? Well, he also said that uh, in order for a cancer cell to respond to cannabinoids, or let me rephrase it, he said that the response to cannabinoid, the anti-tumor response to cannabinoids depending on the presence of cannabinoid receptors. Mm -hmm. And he was specifically saying that a non-tumor cells, uh, a non-tumoral cell do not respond to cannabinoids because they do not express cannabinoid receptors or something along these lines. Yeah. So he was suggesting that cannabinoid receptors was the key. And the preclinical information we have doesn't say that. Uh, we have some cases in which non-tumoral cells do not respond to cannabinoids because they don't have cannabinoid receptors, but we have other examples in which we have non-tumoral cells that do express CB1 and CB2 receptors and they do not die in response to cannabinoids. So, I mean, one has to be very careful when saying things like that. and we. We have to check the scientific literature. And as I told you, for example, in the case of neuroblastoma. Mm. Neuroblastoma is a brain tumor mm -hmm. where when your neurons become tumoral. Mm -hmm. And we have seen in our preclinical models that neuroblastoma cells, these particular brain tumors, are sensitive to cannabinoids. And I mean, when I say sensitive, I mean that cannabinoids can kill these cancer cells. Mm -hmm. Well. Neuroblastoma cells have CB1 and CB2 receptors, mm -hmm. but neurons, healthy neurons, they do also have CB1 and CB2 receptors. And when we treat neurons with cannabinoids, we don't kill them. So the response to cannabinoids does not depend exclusively on the presence of cannabinoid receptors. I'm drowning. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I'm know if that religion. makes sense, but I'm trying to understand it, and I've I've understood most of what what you've said, 
But, but not everything, because I can try to explain again. I mean, it's fantastic. Uh, it, it, is, it is important to, to get the whole information. It is very so, important. And I'm sure Dennis is going to have something to say. Uh, uh, I mean, sure. Dennis is a person that has cured himself of his stage three prostate cancer. Um, mm -hmm. And he worked for 10 years uh, as a researcher for, at MD Anderson Cancer Research Clinic in Texas. Mm -hmm. So. Um, he has personal experience of having cancer. That's what I found Dennis so interesting. He's a biochemist with um, with all this experience of having cancer, mm -hmm. doing the research in the cancer, and you too. Um, <laughs> it's it's just such a fantastic combination. That's why I wanted to do the interview with you, was okay. to bounce these things off the two of you. So Dennis will mm. obviously have questions for you or comments to say, okay. on, on, which is great. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. I have experience from uh, petri dishes and animal models of cancer, and he has experience on himself and, and probably from other patients. So we have to talk and we have to we work together. To we talk. are, I mean, we have a say in Spanish, and we say we have to row in the same direction. So we have to work in the same direction, and, and yeah. that's what we have to do. I mean, and it's you, the only you, way to help patients, and we are both here to help patients. Yeah, exactly, mm. exactly. And, th and that's what interests me as well, is that um, the promise of a natural, organic type of cure for cancer with little side effects really appeals to me. And that's what Dennis was um, is saying, that he... He, uh, he had the stage 3 prostate cancer, he cured it with the, the um, cannabis oil and he kept working two jobs at the same time. He didn't have any time off, he didn't have any ill effects apart from a good night's sleep. It sounds yeah. too good to be true, but I hope it is true. I really hope. I hope it is true I too. I really hope it is true really too. Good. I mean, I'm working to make it true. I mean, that's 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 my dream. So <laughs> I when hope. I started with the research uh, 15 years ago, I I never thought we could be so close to the clinics. So I feel privileged to to be part of this adventure, and, and well, I'll do my best to give the opportunity to patients to have this medicine. Well, I feel privileged Ready to talk them. to you, Christina. That's why I was nervous <laughs> about the whole thing. I, said, I do feel privileged to, uh, to talk to you because you've put so much into it. Now, um, talking about um, clinical studies on humans, you, you mentioned something about that, didn't you, in Spain this year? Or did I hear something about that? Or no? Well, uh, you, I don't know. Are you looking at... What doing, are you are you looking at uh, doing um, studies on humans? Yes, absolutely. We are talking to pharmaceutical companies and with oncologists because we know that cannabinoids uh, have anti-tumoral properties in our preclinical models of cancer. But uh, the next question we have to answer is if they have the same properties on humans. And I think there are two ways to answer that question. The first one is doing clinical trials. Mm. And that's the regular one, let's mm. say. That's the one that doctors accept. So mm. if we don't have clinical trials, we will never have the medical community with us. Mm. So we are pushing oncologists and trying to convince pharmaceutical companies mm. to perform more clinical trials. As far as I know, there are two ongoing trials uh, all over the world right now one in the UK mm. with patients with glioblastoma and mm. they ha they are being treated with a uh, Sativex mm. in combination with Temozolomide which is the drug the medicine that these patients usually mm. receive and there is another trial that is being performed in Israel in this case in patients with solid tumors breast cancer lung cancer prostate cancer anything that is solid mm. and these patients are being treated with cannabidiol so as far as I know these are the only two clinical trials trials that are uh, ongoing right, right now and as I was saying there are two ways to answer the question if cannabinoids work as antitumoral agents in, in patients Mm. One is the clinical trials, mm. but we have another source of information that, are, that we are wasting and it's patients that are self-medicating. We know that are thousands of people well, that are using cannabis I to just, treat... Uh, 
just to stop you there, I just put up a forum the other day. It's not uh, quite happening yet, but mm -hmm. it's a forum for patients using medical cannabis oil. Because as you say, there are thousands out there. Uh, because it's illegal and it has stigma attached to using cannabis, people are very hesitant to come forward and say, you know, I've, I've, I've got cancer. But that's that's changing now. People are just going, oh, what the hell? I'm, you know, I'm dying. I don't care. I, yeah, I, use, yeah. I, I would, I would do the same thing. So, look, yeah, they have the right to do whatever they think it's necessary to heal themselves. Yeah, so yeah. that's a right. That's a human right. So that's, nobody has the right to forbid them to do what they think is best for their health. So I fully agree with you. But the thing is that we are wasting that information because totally. we don't know what they are taking because in most case in cases, uh, the oils or the cannabis that they are using is not controlled. So we don't know how much THC or CBD is in there. Uh, so that information could be so useful for for all of us. I mean, yep. if, if these patients were having a control, yep. a follow-up, uh, I mean, we would have so much information to share with the medical community. Well, Still, the clinical trials would be needed, don't get me wrong. Yep. But this other information is so useful. And if, if you consider the amount, the huge amount of people all over the world that are using you know, it's not only for cancer, but for many other pathologies, mm. for, for example, for pain. There are so many patients treating their pain with mm. cannabis mm. that we wouldn't need more clinical trials. I mean, it's so clear that it's working and it would probably be the same with, with cancer and, and we need that information. So we are also working with patient associations in different countries to... Uh, to